Game Tech. And in this episode of EFI Explained, we're going to be talking about this, the Air Inlet Temperature Sensor. So what we're going to cover is what they are, how they work, their use with electronic fuel injection, how to test them, what to watch out for when using them, and some further technical EFI information. Now, this sensor is very similar to the coolant temperature sensor video, so if you haven't seen that already, I suggest you have a look at it by clicking the link below. So first of all, let's go through what they are. Well, here is a standard two-pin Bosch type inlet air temperature sensor. And you usually find these in the air inlet tracks on your fuel injection engine. Now, there might not be a sensor per se on its own, it could be part of a mass airflow sensor. So don't expect to see one in all instances, but there is one there in one guise or another. So how do they work? Well, they are, much like the coolant sensor, a negative temperature coefficient thermistor, which means their resistance decreases as the temperature increases, and they would generally have a very similar curve to the Bosch type sensor. So you can look up the curve information from the data sheets available on the manufacturer's websites, but in general they will look something like this. Given a temperature in degrees C, and a resistance in ohms, as the temperature increases, the resistance falls. And it's important to note that it's not a straight line curve, it is a logarithmic one, so the resolution and accuracy tends to fall away as the temperature increases. Remember, of course, that every type of sensor or every part number of every sensor will probably have its own characteristic curve. And so here you can see some examples of other brands of sensors and their characteristic curves. And of course, other sensors may not have this connection. As stated, they may be in the mass airflow sensor, or they may be look like this, which is a Ford type airflow, um, air temperature sensor. So let's go over how these sensors are used in electronic fuel injection. Well, as you know, it's very important that we need to understand the volume or the mass of the air entering the engine. And one important thing to note is that the density of that air varies quite proportionally to the temperature of the gas. So it's very important that we measure this temperature when considering our fuel injection algorithms to work out exactly the right amount of fuel to inject into the engine to have it run properly. Much like the coolant sensor, one thing to look out for with these sensors is trying to pair into them when wiring up an aftermarket management system on a car where you're retaining the factory ECU. If you do this, as per the coolant temperature sensor, you will offset the readings of both ECUs and it's not the best practice to undertake. So either fit a second sensor or remove the factory ECU from the equation completely and just run the aftermarket management system if that's, if that's possible to do. Another thing to look out for, as I've said, is that the calibration curves for each of these sensors differ. So it's always best to make sure that the ECU you're using can be programmed to suit the sensor of your choice, or indeed, you choose a sensor that the manufacturer of your ECU recommends you use. So, some more technical EFI stuff in regards to mapping these things, and what they actually do to an engine in, in general use. Well, obviously, as I've said, one thing they will do is they will change the amount of fuel delivered based on the temperature of the air in order to meter the density. So, therefore, that the right amount of fuel is reaching the engine in relationship to the air to get the mixture to burn properly. Another thing they might do is when the intake charge becomes particularly high, such as on a turbocharged or supercharged car, it may start to pull timing or retard the ignition slightly to help inhibit knock and stop pre-ignition from occurring. And that's all there really is to the air temperature sensor. There'll be much more information coming in the following mapping videos, but until then, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.